Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from Caribou, Suddenly. Dan Snaith is a name I've known about for years, but never actually bothered to listen to until now. I remember when Our Love dropped in 2014, and that was around the time I was first starting to watch Anthony Fantano and mulling over the idea of starting up my review channel in the first place. I bet you had I started a year earlier, I probably would have been on that pretty quickly. But it was not to be. I may have seen reviews of Our Love and previewed around it on iTunes or something, but I never, like, properly listened to the whole thing. And I never actually listened to any project from the guy until he released the Sizzling EP under the Daphne name last year, and I covered that in my first Some Stuff I Missed video. I thought it was pretty good, though I knew it was probably not going to be indicative of the material I would typically hear out of the main Caribou stuff. I mean, I had already heard little snippets of his stuff and knew he had a more laid-back, indie-centric blend of down-tempo music and is apparently friends with Fortet, which is cool. Yes, I'm covering his new project too. But I hadn't listened to Snaith's work in depth until now. This brand new album dropping gave me a chance to catch up on his stuff and form my own opinions. So I went through his previous work and I will now be going down his studio album discography so far. Also counting the two Daphne albums, because why not? Alright, this debut is somewhere between Bonobo's Animal Magic, Tycho's Past His Prologue, and Fortet's Pause. Very low-key stuff, not much more than a drum machine, electric piano, and various chopped up samples. Personally didn't find anything particularly exciting, but it could be nice background music that might fit on like those lo-fi beats to study two channels or something, I don't know. It's alright, but nothing essential. Alright, now we got some stuff that has more of its own distinct flavor. This kind of psychedelic folk sampling album, and I thought it was way better than the debut. Really nice and expansive sound design, and all these tracks have a real uplifting energy to them. Even though the sample manipulation is pretty obvious, he got some compelling and unique material out of it. I bet you Bibio and the Avalanches were influenced by this kind of stuff later on. And now for the first album he released under the name Caribou. The previous two were technically released under the name Manitoba, but someone else with that name threatened to sue, so we switched them over to this name. This is more or less the same kind of stuff as Up in Flames, maybe more Krautrock influence this time. Unfortunately, wasn't into this one as much. It got kind of repetitive and long-winded in many parts. These tracks didn't really feel like they had the same kind of life and energy in them either. It's not bad, but it's just okay. Okay, this one isn't even really electronic anymore, aside from the closer track. The rest is basically just straight 60s psych rock. Sounds like something that could have come from artists like The Electric or The Moody Blues or The Zombies or something. Snaith sings on all these songs himself. He sounds exactly like Tame Impala, <laughs> who wasn't really around yet at this point, but whatever. Pretty damn impressed by this. I do always like me some psych rock in this style, and boy did he deliver the instrumental muscle those kinds of projects usually have. This was really good. Alright, and now we've returned to much more overtly electronic territory, combining that kind of indie psychedelic sound he had before with some deep house and techno, creating his loudest and most energetic project to date. I feel like I'd want some more time with it to grow on me, but I do like all of it quite a bit. He's certainly delivering an experience here that I can't get out of any other artist. Definitely one of his better ones. And here's his first album under the Daphne name. Just some very straightforward tech house with repetitive samples and simplistic grooves. Not nearly as interesting or creative as when he was combining this, these styles with his usual indie tinged sound on Swim. Also very much front-loaded. Honestly, it's mostly just underwhelming as a whole, but... It's got its moments here and there. This is kind of like if Xiao Long had Snaith's vocals on it and was generally more melody focused. Still kind of plain, but I much more consistently enjoyed it. Probably his most easily accessible album to date. Not that any of his other stuff is exactly inaccessible, but whatever. It's a good project and I can hang on to it. Can't Do Without You also is stuck with me since I first heard it when it actually came out, so that's a good sign, I think. Um, I think I like this more than Xiao Long. It feels like it has a little more dimensionality and consistency, but it's still pretty simplistic and plain and overlong. Not really resonating with me on a deeper level. It's a perfectly serviceable Tech House album that I'm probably not going to remember or come back to. In retrospect, it's better than both of these albums he put out under the Daphne name. I didn't love it at the time, but it's much more memorable stuff than these albums. Which brings us to here. So yeah, uh, Dan Snaith's back catalog is a bit of a mixed bag for me. Some really good projects and some not as good ones. 
The really his worst ones were just forgettable more than anything. I can probably hang on to Up in Flames, Andorra, Swim, and Our Love. I can see all those projects having a place in my life in some way. They were all really solid. And I do like how he's continually tried to push himself into new territory with his main Caribou albums. They've all had their own different flavors. I do feel like I understand the hype around him. He has definitely created a niche and identity for himself, despite being in a scene with several other artists that you could pretty easily compare him to. Bibio, Fortet, Bonobo. That last Nicholas Godin project comes pretty close too. As for this new album, I didn't really know what to expect. Hasn't been a lot of buzz around this one. I didn't even really get any requests to cover it. Um, um, except for when the singles were dropping. I just wanted to anyway, since Caribou is a pretty recognizable name and I wanted to have all my thoughts on this stuff down for the record, but whatever. I just kind of jumped in hoping to enjoy it and not having any real expectations for it. What did we get with Suddenly? Well, um, it's a bit more of like an 80s-ish synth wavy dance pop album, maybe, but also with a few more abstract ideas and stuff sometimes, and it's a bit all over the place stylistically, but nothing that would really catch you off guard coming out of him. It's probably his most scattered album so far. It, it doesn't really feel like these tracks service a greater whole or of overarching vibe, at least not as much as, it, as his previous albums do, but it also kind of has a feel to it that isn't like the other Caribou albums either. It's not just a lazy retread of past successes. I mean, honestly, it's not an album that got me super excited. I'm probably going to be leaving it behind after I'm done making this video, but it did have quite a few moments that I really liked. May as well discuss the individual tracks. We start out super stripped back and intimate with Sister, a track that is nice, I guess. Cool to hear Snaith at the most forefront of any of his mixes to date, I think. No effects or anything. Not gonna act like this is a track I'm likely to listen to out of context, though. It's cool. It's alright. Thankfully, the, the album has a good run for like the next several tracks, which pick up more and have more energy. You and I has this kind of muted synth wavy feel for much of it, with a bit stronger beats. The randomly has a change up into these more sample heavy sections that really catch you off guard in a good way. That one's fun. Sunny's Time has these intimate pianos that get modulated up and down a lot. Maybe a little disorienting, but it also has these out-of-nowhere fast-paced rap vocals and even some saxophone accompaniment. At first I wasn't sure if this track really came together very well, but it's been a real grower with repeat listens. I like it. Generally speaking, the more energetic tracks on here are the ones that stuck with me the most. New Jade is another great moment, with these warm, psychedelic washes and repetitive vocal samples. It sounds really expansive and has a strong pulse to it that's really uplifting. And then Home, it's, that one's probably the best track in the bunch. Uh, Snaith basically doing a virtual duet with an old 70s singer that comes together super well and has a really charming retro vibe to it. Well, it's either this track that's my favorite or Never Come Back, which is this breezy, deep house tune that just keeps up this energetic groove the whole way through. Probably wouldn't have been out of place on one of his Daphne projects, but would have been one of the better tracks on any of them. And benefits from not being surrounded with other very similar sounding tracks. Oh yeah, and I did skip over Lime. That track, while not as good as the two surrounding tracks, it, it, that's, that one's good. It's, it has a, like a nice little low-key jazzy instrumental with cool change-ups here and there. It does kind of feel like a bunch of random ideas strung together ad nauseum, but it's fun in that way. Though, this project kind of loses my attention in the second half, starting with Filtered Grand Piano, a 50 second interlude that is what it says on the tin and I never actually noticed wasn't just a part of Never Come Back. The last couple of tracks are nice songwriterly type tracks that are pleasant enough but don't really grab my attention as much. Like I Love You and Magpie have solid, relatively catchy tunes and some emotion behind Snaith's vocal performances. They're good, but aren't as investing as previous tracks. And Cloud Song is a bit of an underwhelming finish, if I'm being honest. The one track on this last stretch of the album that did stick out to me more was Ravi, another house track that has some pulse behind it and some chopped up vocal hooks. It's cool, but it's not better than Ever Come Back either. So, yeah, uh, that's Suddenly. On one hand, it's not an album that really has me itching to put it on with more repeat listens from here. It has kind of a weak start and a weak finish. But it also has a stretch of like six really strong tracks in a row that have really interesting and compelling ideas and have good tunes to back them up. And honestly, even the weakest moments on here are still perfectly serviceable in my eyes. There is almost certainly more good here than bad. I mean, 
if you want some kind of mind-blowing, soul-lifting experience that's unlike anything you've ever heard, I don't know if suddenly we'll really go the extra mile like that. As a whole, it's just very scattered. Some tracks are just kind of there and fall into the background, but some are genuinely great. I don't know. It's probably not going to stick with me in the long term, but I can probably give it a pass. Worth the shot for the good moments, if nothing else. It's not as best, it's not as worst. I think this can just get away with a solid 7 out of 10. But of course, it's just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. Thank you.